After months of deadlock negotiations between state governments over how to address the shrinking water supply of the Colorado River, the Biden administration is now stepping in. The Colorado River supplies drinking water to 40 million Americans across seven states, as you see highlighted on your screen. But it also irrigates more than 5 million acres of farm and ranch land and provides power to some of the biggest cities in the West. But severe droughts are forcing some of those states to make cuts to the amount of water it takes from the basin. After those states fail to come to a joint agreement, the federal government is now putting forward its own plans for cutbacks. Annie Snyder joins me now. She's a reporter at Politico who covers water issues, which, as we discussed, are just getting worse in so many parts of the country. Annie, talk to us about the uh, proposals being put forward by the Biden administration, because there are three of them with different ways to play out. What are they exactly? Yes. Yeah, so what the Biden administration did today was take the first sort of formal step towards being able to impose unilateral cuts across three states in the Southwest, Arizona, California, and Nevada, if they're not able to reach a deal, as you say, and if the two main reservoirs that are fed by the river reach crisis levels in the next few years. So those states have been at loggerheads over how the necessary cuts should be doled out. California has, holds the largest rights to the river and holds the most senior, some of the most senior rights to the river. And under the rules governing the river for the past century, their waters would be protected. Um, cuts would be imposed on other states before, and they would be the last to receive the cuts. The other states, led by Arizona, but, but Arizona is joined by the five other states that rely on the river, have argued that that's not an equitable way for apportioning cuts because a lot of this is driven by climate change. And they argue that the, the dwindling supply that we're seeing now is a result of something that wasn't contemplated at the time that those rules were agreed to. And so they've pushed for a more equitable way of apportioning those cuts. What the Biden administration did today was effectively lay out what each of those competing proposals would look like. Uh, and it was a way of giving themselves the legal authority, the legal sort of cover for taking either one of those options should water levels fall to those crisis points in the next few years. And we were just seeing images of the Hoover Dam as you were speaking. This isn't just about energy creation. It's about jobs, livelihoods, farming, irrigation, agriculture. So much is mixed into all of this. Which of those scenarios then, from your point of view, is the most viable considering all these states need something? It's, it's a really difficult question. Yeah. I think politically speaking, there is a broad agreement among six of the seven states that rely on the river that a straight, the, the, the way that cuts are apportioned under the current legal rules is, is called a priority system. So it's effectively the people who put water to use first are protected before the newer users. And what that effectively does is protects water for agricultural users at the expense of cities. I think most people along the river recognize that that's not a politically viable approach over the long term. I mean, we're talking about a scenario in which Phoenix and Tucson and I mean, even San Diego could see their cut, their supplies cut effectively to zero um, from the Colorado River. That is what Colorado River water supplies cut effectively yeah. to zero while farmers in Southern California are continuing to irrigate hay that's being used to feed cattle and in some cases being exported. I think that that is seen as not a politically viable solution overall. However, that is those are the rules, those are the laws that were agreed to, and that is what is on the books right now. You know, it's interesting because you have old laws on the books and new information from the, the, that's being fed by climate change, right? I mean, the Western U.S. saw around a dozen atmospheric rivers in recent months, which relieved the drought in California. Chris Van Cleve was just here speaking with me. We both spent time growing up in Phoenix. He says it's more green there than he's ever seen it before. How is that playing into this conversation, just the, 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 the way that the climate's changing and changing weather systems? I mean, this is absolutely driven by climate change. The Colorado River Basin is in the midst of a 23-year drought. Climate change has shrunken the flows of the river by more than 20% over that time. And as the climate warms, scientists predict that that's going to continue. That trend is going to continue. You point out climate change is is not just one direction, right? This year's wet weather um, is part of what we might expect from climate change. So it's not to say that there aren't going to be some wet years in it. 
But the overarching trend is absolutely towards a hotter, drier future. It's called a ratification. And what's really interesting about this is, you know, these seven states, it includes Wyoming and Utah, some deep red states. It includes California, mm -hmm. a deep blue state. And there is very little debate about that future. I think everybody recognizes that that is the trend that this is where this is going. It's just that how do you divvy up that pain is a very tough political question and one that the states haven't been able to come to on their own. And so that's why we see the Biden administration preparing to step in if they need to. But I think politically and realistically speaking, they are absolutely using this as a moment to try and push the states closer together because what they really want to see here is for the states to come up with a solution themselves rather than having to act unilaterally. Right, right. I like the way you phrased it. How do you divvy up pain, you know, equally? Um, we'll see how this all plays out. Annie Snyder, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me.